Hello. The purpose of this vid pod is to briefly explore the marketing mix, or as it's often referred to, the four P's. And in essence, the title of this vid pod highlights the debate with respect to whether we should adhere to or hold on to the concept um, of the four P's, whether there are enough P's, as it were, or whether the four P's and the marketing mix and what's associated with it is an exhausted, a defunct concept and the idea that marketing has moved on. Now, either before or just after watching this vidpod, you should have read the paper by Constanides. And it sets out a very interesting argument, a very interesting review, very thorough review of how marketing has evolved from the four P's through to relationships, through services, and so on. And all of these are very, very relevant to the brief discussion that we're about to have. And I strongly recommend, therefore, that if you haven't read that paper, you do so very quickly and possibly revisit this discussion. The marketing mix is a long-established, well-established, and generally well-respected, certainly in an industry context, tenet of marketing. Um, it emerged in 1964, but it has its antecedents prior to that. But what we know as the marketing mix, and more specifically the four Ps, has now been around for you know, five decades. And has constantly been part of the marketing debate and certainly with respect to that the marketing management debate and that's something that I'm going to come back to right at the end of this I want you to keep that notion in mind this is principally about marketing management the four P's as you probably know comprise product price promotion and place and undoubtedly in 1964 the world was a little bit more simple Choice was much less varied, consumers were less empowered, and therefore anything, any construct, as it were, any tool, and that's what the four P's are, that's what the marketing mix is, it's, it's a tool. It doesn't provide solutions, it's a tool. But any tool then that emerges at that period is in some respects going to be relatively simplistic. So. The four P's evolve and become the seven P's and the five C's and so on and so forth. Variations in our theme. We do like our, um, we like our abbreviations and we like our uh, alliteration in marketing. One of the reasons I would argue that it is so widespread is that it's actually very easy to remember and it's very recognisable. And what it does for me, and I use this tool when I'm working with companies. That's not to say it's perfect but it's workable because in essence what it does is it establishes as it were a marketing checklist and it's sometimes referred to as a marketing toolkit these are the things as it were that as marketers we can influence we can manipulate we can play around with we can we can create new products we can launch products existing products in new markets we can move price um, in various ways from a cost perspective through to a market orientation perspective. In terms of promotion, now this is one of the ones that's probably most disputed because promotion and one of the challenges of the marketing mix is that it's an outward direction, i.e. it comes from the company and is emitted from the company, it's emitted from the organisation and promotion is therefore talking at uh, customers as it were. And maybe we need to loosen up a little bit. Maybe we need to relax a little bit, not get too caught up in, 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 the, in the P and think about promotion as propaganda, propagation, communication, all of those issues as well. So if we loosen our definition or our concept of promotion, then I think the mix begins to make more sense. And likewise, place has been challenged because it tends to, to refer to physicality of a place and getting the right product to the right place at the right time. And to be honest, I don't really see anything wrong with that. The idea of getting the right product at the right price to the right place makes perfect sense. And it doesn't matter whether we're referring to place as a digital environment or a physical environment or whether it's about getting the product to the consumer 
uh, in their home. The reality is that the role, or one of the roles of marketing, one of the functions must surely to be to bring consumers, goods and services together in a place, as it were, of mutual benefit, whatever that place may be. So again, I think we get a little bit tied up, a little bit hung up on the narrowness of the mixed definitions, as it were. We have moved on. We maybe have to bend these things, and that's part and parcel of what this discourse and what Constantinides um, is considering in her paper as well. So, we have moved into a new era. Certainly within the last 15 to 20 years, there has been a shift on emphasis. Um, a dispute with respect to the relevance, the true relevance of the mix. And the suggestion may be that we use it, the companies use it, because it's familiar, because possibly there's a degree of indoctrination through business schools and academics. It's habit, in essence. That's, that's maybe the, the strongest argument against it. We, we do it because it's habit and, and it's lazy. And so the debate now explores whether it's relevant, whether it's applicable, both from an academic perspective and also an applied, a business perspective. And importantly, and maybe this is where the biggest separation is with respect to you know, marketing makes good or bad, is from a philosophical perspective. And I'm sure that you will be familiar with the two dimensions of marketing. Marketing as a function, marketing as a process, marketing as a practice, and marketing as a philosophy. The idea that the philosophical viewpoint is to do with the centrality of the consumer and everything is built around that. Now, I don't want to get too much into the uh, the bigger debate, as it were, and I don't want to get sidetracked, but whilst the customer is important, we do have to remember that we are, broadly speaking, not uniquely, but broadly speaking about businesses, not schools of thought. And there is a difference there. And businesses, therefore, need tools that help them do business well. And that is undoubtedly one of the strengths of the marketing mix, is it helps businesses do business well. There's also nothing to suggest that the mix can't evolve and change, that it can't be adapted by business or by academics or by yourselves, for that matter. So, the basis, therefore, of the revisionist argument is that whilst the world has changed, these four Ps have remained broadly unchallenged and certainly unchanged. If we look at the distinction, as it were, between the managerial school of thought and the philosophical school of thought, the managerial school embraces the mix principally because it is workable. It encourages marketing managers, it encourages business, it encourages product developers, it encourages actually everybody who's involved in marketing. And in essence, that is everybody within an organisation, to think about the various components of a product or a service. And that also is one of the challenges. People say, well, it's product focused, not service focused. Again, for me, that's semantics. That's not that difficult to get your head around it, ultimately. The only problem there is the strict adherence to the P's rather than to the concept. If we think about the mix as the checklist for our business, so what is it that we need to do? What is it that consumers want? What price do we have to charge to make it attractive to them, but to make it viable to us as a business? How do we inform the consumers and how do we engage with the consumers so that we understand what it is they want and how we modify things? How do we explore in terms of what's happening in the wider marketplace? And where do we find this place whereby both parties come together? Then, in that sense, managerially, to me, that's not overly complex. And managerially, it works. Philosophical 
school challenges the mix much more. Because what it does say, and I've already mentioned this, but what it does suggest or say is that the mix as it currently stands encourages what we might call an insider approach rather than outside in. What do I mean by that? An insider approach is whereby the activities are generated by the business and they're driven by the business rather than looking externally and driving the business that way. And in essence it's business orientation versus consumer orientation or marketing orientation. Again, I'm not entirely convinced of the absoluteness of these schools of thought. And there has to be some, I think, common ground in there. And in essence, then, what we'll, what we'll look at is the idea that maybe we can reconcile the irreconcilable. To me, they're not that far apart. You have to have extremes. You have to have polarity to test, as it were, the rigour of the position, the rigour of the proposition. And there has been this constant debate with respect to marketing as a philosophy and marketing as a function, marketing as a management process. And the managerialists would say, well, actually, it's not about a standpoint. It's not about a philosophy that businesses don't have the luxury of being philosophical, reflective in the true sense of philosophy. But they have to make things happen, they have to do things, and sometimes they have to do things under pressure, certainly with very limited resources and limited information, and limited time. So the opportunity to sit back, reflect, debate, discuss, discourse is not necessarily there. That's a luxury that may exist in a different realm, such as academia, universities, the classroom, where we can debate these things and think about them. And also business would say that adopting a true marketing philosophy approach, i.e. building the customer into everything, putting the customer at the centre of the organisation, the centre of the business, whilst it may in some respects be useful, it is impracticable for two reasons. One, the customer doesn't necessarily know what it is that they want or what it is that they can have. And two, actually, the customer isn't the only person who creates value within a business. So if we think about the idea of shareholders, they add value. They add value in a very different way. And their view is not a philosophical one necessarily. They may have philosophical perspective but they invest in a business because of the business because of the strength of the business I would argue that the role of marketing has changed since 1964 and the role of marketers has changed since 1964 I would argue there's much greater emphasis now on knowledge on insight and importantly understanding across all parties and as such, I would say that marketing and the role of marketing has become much more outside in. That marketing, as it were, is the conduit, it's the interpreter, and it's the communicator of this knowledge. But to me, that doesn't necessarily deny the existence of the fundamentals. And I think that's what the mix does. It brings us back to fundamentals. So there is a but, there is a however. The truth is, whether we like it or not, People will always need products. And the marketing mix reminds us of that. The marketing mix reminds us not to navel gaze, not to get caught up in distractions, but really to come back to what it is that consumers are buying from us. They are buying goods and services 